Hello Twin Flames, this is Victoria and I'm here with your daily energy check. Welcome to my channel, whether you're new or coming back, I'm excited to have you here today. And it's actually going to be a special reading as it is Halloween in the Western tradition. Tomorrow is going to be All Saints Day. And actually All Saints Day is a much older tradition and celebrated in much, you know, many, many more countries around the world. <laughs> We also have the Day of the Dead in Mexico this week. So, um, in other words, this is the time, and actually these last few days were the time when the connection with our ancestors, um, with those who either have passed or even with those who are far away from us, we don't necessarily see them on a regular basis, is especially strong. And needless to say, this is a great opportunity to get some wisdom from those souls, from those generations that were before us and that, that have made it possible for us to be here now. And although we all may have very different relationships with our families that include our ancestors, right? Or some of us don't really know our ancestors as such. But it's important during this time to acknowledge them, uh, to give thanks if possible. And of course, to and different cultures have different rituals around that. In the Western culture, it's, I would say, generally less, uh, less of a tradition to do this acknowledgement. But it's still, it's like, it's one of those older um, sacred knowledge uh, that was lost with time. So what I suggest that we do today is what was I was guided to do in this reading is to get us ancestor messages for the twins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an oracle deck as always and today I'm going to take my Beyond the Nuria deck and this will be messages from the universe for each of the twins, so like the big message at this time, right? What is important? What do we need to know? So you can Consider it for yourself like your daily energy check, right? For each of the twins, there will be some guidance here from the universe. Now, then we'll get to tarot and we'll get messages from ancestors, from the tribal soul, right? Because this is a collective message, a collective reading that I'm doing. Of course, it's going to be more generic from like, you know, those elders, like from the... <sighs> maybe even you know ancestors that came before like, like many generations before right and it's going to be more about giving collective message for the divine feminines and divine masculines for the twin flames right those who are with twin flame mission in this lifetime as we speak and then i also have my angel therapy deck here so we'll get some messages from the angels with some advice Okay, let's get started. And first card will be for Divine Feminine. So this is a message from the universe. From beyond Lemuria. <laughs> we have three, actually. That's fine, I'll take them. I'm guided to take them all. The universe has a lot to say today. <laughs> Awakened awareness, of course the high heart chakra and shine your light beautiful and to me this is continuation of what we we're talking about yesterday with the feminines taking a galactic perspective on what's going on in their life and what their past looks like it also has um number 44 here and we have 17 and 6 so 17 and 6 take it how resonates for 44 is obviously the twin sign but yeah this is a reminder of how massive this mission is this path is that we're on and even through fighting the small fights and overcoming and healing very personal um, challenges issues and pains we contribute to this galactic uh, consciousness right or something about the word awakened to the awakened awareness of us all as a world worldly like earthly collective right and we contribute to 
uh, raising the vibration and the frequency of the mankind. So this is your message of the universe to remember about that, to be patient and kind to your heart. And the high heart chakra is a bit of more advanced information on the chakra work because it's not the same as the heart chakra and you can do your research on that. I just don't want to get too deep into that because I feel like there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of information in this reading today. So I don't want to make it too long. But yeah, it's um, if you know, you know why it's important to acknowledge the high heart chakra. If you don't, you can, and how it's connected with this massive mission we have, and even with the Twin Flame mission specifically. And it's very important to keep shining your light and raising this awareness in the world. Like that's the that's the treasure that you are divine feminines and somebody definitely needed to hear that today <laughs> about the work that you do that and actually as we, as we talk about ancestors and the way i see it i think i mentioned it the other day because i'm now finishing uh, a course that i'm taking about ancestral healing um yes i know from my personal story like firsthand how the uh, generational karma and the heritage let's put it that way from the ancestors could really impact our lives even before we know it and now i've actually added i've known it for a very long time um from my childhood for a lot of it even though i didn't have all the vocabulary i still had the understanding and uh, recently i've also added astrology as another point to it and i didn't realize how much how powerful the personal astrology, the birth chart would be for like predefining our destiny and our past in certain ways because of what experiences we are supposed to receive, what lessons we're supposed to learn. Like it's all, well, not all, sorry. A lot of it is predefined and it's just crazy. It blew up my mind when I got into some of the details. It was like, wow, it's just then a matter of how, when, and when, and who, you know, the details. But certain milestone events were supposed to happen. Like, it was like pre-written, you know, like the Akashic Records already included that information. It was just about the details and how it will happen. And with ancestors, I find that even if you don't know a lot about your ancestry, even if you're not sure where to start or um, how like, their story relates to yours. And of course, there is a lot of information out there about that these days, good in the rituals of connecting with them, communicating, etc., etc. It's important to acknowledge that some of the patterns that you're working through in your life, whether it's in your physical body or your mindset or your energetic field, uh, there is a good deal of kind of issues and fears that come from the ancestors. So there is definitely the gift cluster, the knowledge, the wisdom that we get from the ancestors, but there's also a lot of shadow, a lot of baggage that we get from the ancestors. So before you rush to criticize yourself for that, or, you know, don't do that on the one hand, so it's one perspective, do not think that all of those things that you got onto, onto yourself, right? No, there's still, like each of us has baggage from the ancestor that we're supposed to heal for the whole family line. And that goes into that separate conversation for another day about ancestor healing. From a different perspective, it's very important to do, even if you, like I said, don't know where to start, who they are, what the connection is, you don't know the rituals, it's still important to understand that with, by doing healing in your own right for your own life in whatever you see that's coming up in yourself you are doing that work because either it came to you from the ancestors and you're healing it you know through that line you're kind of like clearing the channel of communication and you're going to get blessings connected with it because you're going to be clearing the channel right the energy is going to flow more freely or if it's something that 
was introduced during your lifetime within your story which of course is also true and will be true for everyone and anyone right something that we pass on to generations to come then it's also just as important to heal it so that you don't pass the pain and the fear but rather that more of connectedness harmony and love to the two generations to come right so whichever way you look at it the work that you do for yourself for your own life definitely contributes to the ancestor healing and to helping your ancestor cluster okay speaking of ancestors and channels of communications we have the portal keeper here <laughs> I'm actually gonna look it up in the book because I've gotten this card before, but I don't remember the top of my head what it was about and just don't wanna miss it. So this is the message for divine masculines. And I'm probably gonna skip to the divinator minion right away. It has quite a long story actually here. Gently explore the edges of your reality. Spend time in the forest. To listen, deepen your meditation practice, dance yourself into ecstasy. Explore psychic tools and study new healing modalities. If you feel lacking in purpose or life seems a little mundane, remember there is never a reason to be bored. What we experience with our physical senses is just the tip of the iceberg. Magic exists wherever you care to find it. Look between the lines to discover to limitless discovery limitless discovery is available to you divine masculines if you have the eyes to see the senses to notice beautiful okay let's get into tarot and i just as i was um looking at the cards a few minutes ago i decided that i'm just going to use different decks for uh, df and dm so this is my dream keepers tarot i'm going to use it for the messages for divine feminine collective from the ancestors from the tribal soul what do divine feminines on the twin flame pass are supposed to know at this time messages from the ancestors what is the extra information what is the new angle Okay, we have the Justice, we have Ace of Swords, and we have the Fates, which is the Wheel of Fortune in this deck. I'm actually glad that it came out as a Fates. It gives it different sound. Okay, let's see, and now let's see what we have for the Masculines. Messages from the ancestors, from the tribal soul, for divine masculines that have chosen twin flame mission in this lifetime. King of Cups, the Hierophant, Seven of Wands. This is the after tarot card when the guy. So it's like if you remember in the classic tarot, the guy is standing on the heel kind of like with his wand and this is the next moment and the guy jumps in okay so messages for divine feminines and by the way in all of these cards we see feminine figures justice usually is feminine fates usually doesn't have really people on it uh face of swords usually doesn't have people on it and I can hardly remember anywhere where it's a, like a woman figure there. So yeah, and I know that when we speak about divine feminine, we speak about the energy, it could be male or female really, the body, the avatar is irrelevant, but um, for the most of us, it's still gonna be a reflection of a gender, right? And I think it's very powerful. And in the cards, that's the way to show it. Usually that's the symbolism. Uh, the feminine energy is displayed as a woman and to me this speaks very strongly and I'm so glad that we can see this feminine vibe in all of them and if you wish this is to me the biggest theme here is that the feminines actually uh, 
get to be in charge, get to take the, the not the priority, but it's like a matriarchal society, really, that we are, what I'm getting, we're going back into that. When women are being acknowledged more and more in their power, in very different aspects, and a lot of these aspects are actually traditionally male roles. The justice, to me, this is like a legal position, maybe in politics, maybe in the judiciary system, right? In finance, women taking charge and making big decisions. Fates is like the more of a deity or the higher power, you know, who do we pray to, who do we meditate with, who do we ask for help and again a lot of times it's been i know it's not for every religion or philosophy but still it was predominantly masculine figures that were figures of authority of cult whatever you name it right because for some cultures especially in the 20th century it kind of turned into idolizing certain political leaders generally still masculine um, now it's moving around where the feminine value, like the mother Gaia value, is being recognized and the wisdom that it's not a weakness to ask the female deity for guidance and support. It's a sign of strength because this is the, the nurturing and loving wisdom. This is like that perspective without judgment, without uh, compassion competition and ambition, right? Which kind of removes that extra ego layer from uh, guidance and from giving advice. Ace of Swords, yeah, so this is knowing the truth and going with the truth, right? And again, Swords is usually the air element and it's usually more of a masculine uh, image, more of a masculine mindset, right? It's like giving it straight people right without beating around the bush and now we're seeing the female in that role where the woman in the current society and in years to come uh, where we're still in the transformation season not just I don't just mean Scorpio season just mean November I mean as a world in this last few years and still a few years to come there's huge transformation going on in our global collective mindset, set of values, etc., etc. Big part of it this year, of course, connected with North Node being in Taurus. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, it's the collective awareness changes in a way where the woman doesn't have to be um, pretending to be a certain way or believe certain things to be acknowledged, to be heard to accomplish certain things. It's a lot more moving towards the woman to be able to be authentic and speak their truth because they have a lot to say, right? Historically, there's been a stereotype that women, like women didn't have a right to vote and they didn't have a say in a lot of different decisions, officially and unofficially, right? And this is changing now because not only it's, there's a big focus on equality and diversity and all of those things, but also there is a recognition of a big value of a woman's voice, of a feminine voice. Let's come back to the energy rather than the gender. But feminine voice, feminine energy, speaking the truth. So to me, this is the, the main message is for the feminines to remember their value and their worth in their femininity, in their feminine, in the feminine aspect of their being, because they are predominantly feminine and it's important to recognize and to cherish this part of you. If you have a chance to acknowledge your female ancestors today, please do so. And remember that uh, we're basically standing on their shoulders and a lot of the things that we're capable of doing today is because of them and paving the way, basically, right? So it's important to acknowledge their suffering, uh, what they had to go through in their life without having the uh, opportunities that we have today. And, uh, you know, give thanks, give your appreciation, show some support and continue with your healing journey and with 
promoting the feminine voices in this world in many different aspects of course as light workers we have a lot more tools at our disposal than just the 3d uh, plane okay with the masculines so yeah it's also it's interesting i'm glad that you could actually see me shuffling the cards because here we get a lot of masculine figures only masculine figures as a matter of fact right so again this is to me this is the representation of a male in the current world and all the different things that they had to put up with and again to me this is a so very much like a holy trinity in terms of uh, mind body and soul that's how i see it i feel like the portal keeper and the connection actually with this is that the ancestors are saying that it's never really for the for the masculines it may look like um from the untrained with the untrained eye it may look like it's mostly focused in 3d in the physical reality and be logical and pragmatic but it's actually a lot more than that and and um divine masculines are just the brighter representation of it and you know as we all know like our journey is not just about separating ourselves from everybody else right and just being this it, it is partly that right right being the guide and light and being the leader uh for people who have the eyes to see and who uh, need that message that we have to deliver but it's a lot about learning what people have to go through what they experience through our own experiences of course so that we can help we can represent people like the mass right the collective and we recognize we're part of them and they can recognize us from their perspective that you know we are sort of in the same boat and we're experiencing similar things so really it's kind of like the portal uh the portals are kind of interchanging and it's important to for the masculines to remember about all the different aspects of their reality and not to just get pulled into one of the one of them right most of the time they're pulled into the physical battle the physical um, profile you know they are expected to do different things physically from other people and i mean that both in terms of like you know strong men the, like men the protector and again i'm diving into the gender here but this is just to make my symbolism a little bit easier but it will work just as well with the up with a different gender still representing the masculine energy um so yeah like the man the protector the strong the stronger one right like carrying the physical weights the burdens also physical perspective in terms of sex and being more active in terms of uh flirting in terms of attracting female you know like being just more active from that perspective that's also physical and with sexual relationships of course as well right like there's a lot of pressure from the physical world and usually that's what distracts from the rest of it but there's also the soul perspective right and the guidance that we get and the divine masculines get even more straightforward guidance of like do this don't do this do this don't do this and yes a lot of the learnings come directly from the karmic uh, situations and the experience in the physical but it's still remember to it's important to remember that uh, just because men are largely focused in that physical realm it doesn't mean that spiritual part is not important for them it's just as, as important that there's a very direct link there's very direct portal between the spiritual and the physical body and just as much there is a portal that connects the emotional body right and this is where the mindset goes to although it's kind of different if we speak about elements of this is water and mindset is more about uh, air but still emotions are building our values they are speaking to our passions to what we like what we dislike right 
it's very important to be in touch with for masculines with their emotions not to forget about this important part because emotions are created have been created initially to signal to us what is going on what gives us joy what is uh, what we feel is dangerous to us or what we are fearful of right so they're just as important again to connect all the three different aspects of reality and again for masculines it's important to acknowledge at this time if possible your male ancestors uh, people who have been there before you if you don't know your own ancestor not many of them maybe there were some other uh, elderly figures of authority or mentors that you uh, have looked up to especially those who have passed but even those who still live uh, it's important to acknowledge them as well because especially with this reading as we talk about the collective consciousness the awakened awareness right it's very important to kind of to not to separate artificially like okay these people i'm included in my circle <laughs> these people i'm not it is important and blood family and relations are important but you'd be surprised how important are those people who were in communication with our blood relatives right and if you start thinking about it that way you would see more and more the connection to the collective and large right this brings us to the natural law of a unity that we're all one that we're all connected it's not like this is me and this is my space this is you and that's your space and you do what you want i'm gonna do my thing right there's still this sense of connectedness that of how we impact each other and with ancestral healing work you can see it on a much larger scale so ancestors are trying to say for two divine masculines yes acknowledge these people understand that what you're going through right now is at large a product of their activity and that means again both positive and negative things uh, we are in a more a much more advanced society much more efficient society especially when it comes to male figures and what uh, masculine figures were expected to do say even 50 years ago and what their roles are right now right so it's an, a lot more advanced it's a lot more uh open-minded view but there's also a lot of new struggle because as we get more information we become more aware we get more questions we get more moral dilemmas and we get more problems to solve as a result right so there are both aspects okay um last but not least let's get card of guidance from the angel therapy deck for divine feminine swatching so this is from the angels this is a different group right so we recognize that among the different higher entities in ethers there will be your ancestors there will be other guides and they are more kind of assigned to you there are some dedicated guides and they can include ancestors and may not include them there are other guides that kind of are uh, here and there and they may come in for a little bit and then just to deliver certain messages and then go off. Archangels and angels, of course, a different class to represent masters. So yeah, but they all have a role to play in your past. So this is like a, so we've been getting our messages from different groups, right? At first it was like from universe at large, like high power, what they have to say, the divine message. Then we had messages from your, specifically from the ancestors, from the tribal soul. And this is the message from the angels. This is a different group of entities. And the, um, the card is mediumship. Again, you just can't make it up. It says, you have the natural ability to connect with departed loved ones. Not joking. <laughs> yes, you have that ability, Divine Feminines. If some of you were doubting it while I was doing this reading, this is your confirmation that you have that ability. This is part of your gift cluster and the angels are reminding you about that ability, especially if you have some questions to your ancestors so you would like to get some help from them or just to start the communication because one of the important um, 
findings that I got from it, the course that I'm taking now, is that it's important to give ancestors the opportunity to speak. And that's like the biggest hope and need and want to be able to be heard. And not even like because they want to change the course of history or like tell you a story of like some lessons that they've learned, maybe, but for the most part, it's even to be heard, to be able to tell their story is important. So I guess it's important at this time to build that connection. We have a great opportunity during, still during this time of, because like I said, this week was still like Halloween is today, but we're moving towards All Saints Night and there will be even official holidays like later in the week, like on the 2nd or the 3rd of November, different countries connected with this. So there's still, you know, you have a great, like a good few days where you can do this work and build these connections. What do we have for the masculines from the angels? What do divine masculines need to know? What's the advice? Thank you. Two cards. We have the sacral chakra and the crown chakra. Interesting combination, right? Pay attention to your ideas as they are messages of true divine guidance sent in answers to your prayers. So what I'm getting along with this is that the ideas may be very brave, very blunt, very innovative to what you were thinking about or you would normally expect, right? But it's important to acknowledge this, at least to write them down. If you're not ready to run with them right away, at least write them down so you don't forget. It's very important. And maybe just as unexpectedly, you'll see another link and another thread and another message from other sources where it will all make sense to you. And then we have the sacral chakra. You're highly sensitive to chemicals, additives, processed foods, and energies right now. Respect your sensitivities by avoiding harsh items, situations, and relationships. Yeah, so if you do the chakra work, work with your sacral chakra. If not, just take it easy on yourself, divine masculines, during these few days. So you're extra sensitive at this time. I would say, like, because we're in the eclipse season during these two weeks, between the, like, basically another week, you're going to be extra sensitive to everything. And again, we are being drawn, as you can see in this card, to all the levels, right? The body, the mindset, and the soul. So, yeah, be kind to yourself, be tender with yourself, and take it easy. Be more perceptive to the messages and actually the easier you will be on yourself or the more diligent you'll be on yourself with the in terms of healthy lifestyle uh, the brighter the message will be that you will hear okay i hope this has been good for you guys thank you so much for joining me today i wish you all the best happy halloween if you're celebrating and of course i'll be back with more messages very very soon Bye, everyone.